Hey guys, my name is Bound to Divide, and welcome to your first 15 minutes in Ableton Live 11. Okay, let's get started here on the left. We see this window, and this is called our browser window. This is where we find sounds and instruments and effects that we can then drag into our project or arrangement and uh, use them to build out a song. To the right of that, we have this window which shows us two MIDI channels and two audio channels. This is called our session view. There's two different views in Ableton Live, and one is called the session view and one is called the arrangement view. You can toggle between them by hitting the tab key on your keyboard. And you can also switch between them by clicking on this button, or these two buttons. And the difference between them can be explained quite easily just by looking at the two icons on these buttons. One has horizontal lines and the other has vertical lines. So in other words, this is the uh, vertical representation of our project. This is the horizontal representation of our arrangement. So if I'm in the arrangement view and I hit play using this play button up here, you can see this needle is moving from left to right. So it's going to be playing our project or our arrangement from left to right. If I hit my spacebar again to stop it, and then tab over here to this session view, we see these channels, but there is no real arrangement that can be made in this view. So what this is being used for typically is just to create ideas. You can create MIDI clips and trigger audio files that just loop over and over again. Um, so yes, it's very good for creating ideas or performing live loops, but it doesn't really allow us to build out entire arrangements or songs. And for that reason, I work 99% of the time inside the arrangement view, and for the rest of this tutorial, we're going to be working in the arrangement view. Okay, so now we are in our arrangement view. If we shift our attention down to the bottom here, we see this window that says drop an instrument or sample here. This is typically referred to as your effects chain. And if we had to load up an instrument or a sample or an effect, this is where we would see it and this is where we could configure it and control it. Okay, so let's do an example here. I'm just going to go into sounds here and look for a sound, let's say, in guitar and plucked. And we'll just find one of these sounds and I'm going to drag it down onto this MIDI channel over here. And here we can see it's loaded. The file name is 12 string guitar. And here we can see 12 string guitar, the, file, uh, the uh, name of the instrument. And we can see a bunch of knobs which allow us to control the, the instrument and all its characteristics. Uh, you can find out more about these controls by reading the manual or simply by hovering your mouse over a control and looking to your bottom left and reading in this info view pane uh, a little description about it. So here we can see this knob adjusts the mass of the hammer. These uh, knobs are a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial. So how do we trigger the sound and how do we hear it playing? There's two ways to do that. The first way would be to play it using a keyboard like this. We can also use our computer keyboard. If we go up here to the top and we see this little keyboard over here, if that's switched off and we hit a key on our keyboard, say A, nothing happens. It just starts to trigger other functions inside, the, inside of Ableton. And if we enable it, then we can hit our A key, for example, and play it like as if it was a, uh, a, a normal like MIDI keyboard. The other way we can trigger it is by creating a MIDI clip by highlighting a section, hitting Control shift m and that inserts a MIDI clip, and then using the piano roll to trigger the sound. So we can place notes if you tilt your head to the left like this. And look at this, it looks uh, almost like a, well, it looks pretty much like a keyboard. We can see all of our notes and the corresponding description of the notes. Here you can see as I scroll through, it goes E, D, C sharp, C, B, and, and so on. 
And if I create a MIDI note here by double clicking and dragging it out, I can then hit play and I can hear that being triggered. So those are the two ways we can trigger a instrument, one using keyboard, the other using a piano roll. Okay, so let's get back to this little window over here. We can place MIDI effects, I mean, sorry, audio effects. If we go into audio effects, let's try and place a delay there. Um, if you just go down to delay and loop here and then double click or drag it, you can drag it. And then I'm just going to delete it to display the other way in which we can place it there. We can double click it. And as long as we have this channel selected, when we double click, it'll place it onto this uh, audio effects chain. So now when I trigger this guitar, it's going to send the audio through whatever else comes after it in this chain. So if I just play it using my keyboard, we're now hearing it repeat with this delay. Okay, another way we can load uh, sounds into our arrangement is by using samples, or you might want to think of them as pre-recorded audio files. If we just go down to samples over here, you can hear something like a kick drum. And uh, typically these would need to be loaded onto an audio channel. We can also load it into a MIDI, MIDI channel using an instrument called a sampler, and that's a bit beyond the scope of this lesson, but just know that if you want to place audio files into your arrangement in their rawest form, you would need to just drag it onto an audio channel. So I can't really see this audio file here, and that's just because the arrangement is too far zoomed out. We can actually zoom in on that by clicking on this little bar up here with this magnifying glass and dragging down to zoom in and dragging up to zoom up. So I just want to zoom in we can also drag left and right. I'm going to zoom in so that we can see this and actually work with it. Okay, so here we can see our kick drum and I can play it by hitting the space bar, clicking on it and hitting the space bar. Okay, so now if we shift our attention back down to this audio effects chain, if I double click on this, you'll see this effects chain converts into just a bit of information about our sample that we've just double clicked on. So here we can see the waveform, we can change the or transpose the note that it's playing, uh, we can see some information about it and we can just, you know, we have quite a few controls for it. If you wanted to go back to the view where we are seeing that audio effects chain, we can just double click back on the MIDI channel or on the audio channel. So we can toggle between these two by double clicking there. So if I just uh, load up another audio effect, delay over here, and now you can see the delay there. If I wanted to go back to seeing and controlling this kick sample, I can go back in here and by double clicking on it. Okay, so let's uh, move our attention over here to this top bar where my mouse is moving across. It's quite a few parameters here. I'm just going to go over the basic essentials that you'll need when you're starting out. At the top left, we see this number over here, which represents the BPM, beats per minute. Or oh, basically, you can think of it as the speed of your project. And we can adjust the speed of that by shifting it up and down by just clicking and dragging up and down. And we can also click there and just begin typing numbers on our keyboard and that'll change the value. Okay then going over to the right we're going to go straight to this little button over here which is our metronome and we can click that metronome by to turn it on and then if we click anywhere in our arrangement and hit the space bar you'll hear the metronome playing. Okay I'm going to turn that back off. Then over here to the right we see these little numbers which basically just tells us at which bar we are. You can see the little bar numbers over here. If I click somewhere you'll see that changing. So basically wherever our playhead is sitting it corresponds to that number. Then we have the play, stop and record buttons. So you already know to play we hit the space bar. To stop we hit the space bar again. So that'll basically be play and stop. We can also click stop once 
the uh, project or once the playhead has stopped moving if we click that again it's going to move it all the way back to the very first bar of the project okay and then if we keep going across here and we reach this loop function over here if i turn it on it enables this little bar you can see if you just shift your attention to this bar and i turn this off those bars those lines those vertical lines disappear turn it on they come back and that's just the loop function so anything that is between these two bars will just play over and over again i'm just going to zoom in to just demonstrate this a bit better if i bring this down and you watch the playhead moving when i hit the space bar you'll see it keeps jumping back to the beginning when it reaches the end of this so how we can choose where to place this we can either drag it across or we can find a point in our project that we want to loop say this kick drum and i just click it i'm going to zoom in over here let's say i just want to play this over and over again between these two points i can hit Control and l to loop that then if i hit space now we're hearing that play over and over again if I disable this, it'll keep moving. Okay, so let's say we wanted to create a song. Uh, we would definitely need more than the amount of channels we have available here. And we can infinitely add more channels simply by right-clicking and clicking Insert Audio Track for new audio tracks or right-clicking and inserting MIDI Track for new MIDI tracks. There are also shortcuts for these. You can right click and see the shortcut. It's best to learn those, but just to go over them quickly, Control T to add a new audio track and Control Shift T to add a new MIDI track. Okay, so now we can delete these ones because we're not using them in this tutorial. So to do that, it's just right click and delete, or the shortcut is to just hit the delete button on your keyboard. We can select more than one by holding down Shift and clicking delete and another way to do it would be to hold control and you can choose separate ones to delete okay so let's go over a little bit of organization features um, we have the ability to rename channels which is very handy so here we have our kick drum we can rename it by hitting control and r and then just typing kick and then hitting enter or we can right click and rename it. Another thing we can do is we can easily rename a few channels one after the other by hitting Control R and then typing whatever we want to name that and then hitting the tab key, which is going to just allow us to start typing in the very next channel. I can type there again and I can type here again. The other feature there is, is the ability to change the colors of the tracks. You can right click here and just choose a color. And you can also uh, change the color of the clip to match the track by right clicking here and say, assign track color to clips. So I definitely recommend keeping your channels named appropriately and also color coding them to help you just stay a bit more organized. Okay, so the other feature that there is that you will be using very often is basically just copy pasting or duplicating. So let's say we wanted to take this kick and repeat it over and over again. Uh, instead of going in and finding it and dragging it into the project over and over again, we could simply select it, right click and go copy, and then choose another place to place it and right click and hit paste. Quicker than that would be to just use the shortcut keys, which is pretty common across all programs in Windows uh, and on Mac. It's just Control C and then click somewhere else, Control V. The other way you can do this is by holding down Control on your keyboard and just clicking and dragging. And whatever is selected, it will copy. So if I just select one of them, I can drag and copy. If I select all of them by holding down Shift and clicking here, I can then drag and copy all of them. And then the quickest way to quickly duplicate something one position to the right would be to select it 
and just hit Control D, and that'll last keep duplicating whatever has been selected. So I'm just going to delete that by hitting Delete. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. We will be doing another video where we create an entire track from scratch. So if you want to put all we've learned into practice, then definitely move on to that video and we'll take it to the next level. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.